Hi, everyone. Welcome to Spill the Tea Radio, where we interview awesome singers, songwriters, and those who influence their lives. Spill the Tea Radio explores the journey, creativity, and inspiration behind the songs. With me today is Kat Bernardi. Kat is a multi-award winning jazz vocalist, composer, arranger, and educator from Mississauga, Ontario. Her crystalline voice and timeless style have led, led her to jazz festivals around the GTA and was the 2019 TD Toronto Jazz Hotspot feature in the Downtown Markham Music Festival. Kat has recorded two EPs, Minor Ballad Major Romance in 2014 and Let's Get Cozy in 2020. The EP's title track was one of the top four picks in Canadian Beats Weekly Beatdown and was featured on Pop Can Radio's Top 24 Picks for New Music Tuesday. She just released her new single and uh, with the music, Mona Lisa. Now, you mentioned the uh, playing to empty rooms, and I think that at the very, very beginning of one's career, that might happen uh, more often than one would care to remember how do you get past that as an artist how do you deal with an empty room or only a few people show up when you had expected uh, hundreds thousands yeah i think any any you know regularly gigging musician has experienced something like this i'm at a point in my career now where just this past summer i played for a crowd of thousands of people at Mississauga Ital Fest. I think there were four or five, six thousand people there for my performance. But, you know, 10 years ago, I remember very specifically, maybe even a little longer than 10 years ago, um, I remember playing for a bar where the only people there was, you know, the bar owner and one random guy that stayed for 30 minutes. And that was the show. We played three sets to a completely empty bar. And it was, you know, it's an experience. But in terms of how you get past it, I think you have to look at it as an opportunity to practice. Mm -hmm. When there's an empty house, you still have to treat it the same that you would for, you know, a house of 100, 200, 300 people. And um, I actually had um, a really interesting chat with the multi-award winning Grammy Juno Award winner, uh, Liberty Silver. I did a show with her. Um, and some other wonderful artists, Heather Christine and Carla Casanova, Denise Leslie. We did a show together at the Oakville Center in September and we played with Liberty Silver. And she told me that one of her early gigs when she was a teenager, she was playing to almost a completely empty house. And it just so happened that David Foster was there. And, you know, that sort of kickstarted her career. So you really don't know who's going to be in the audience. So the best approach is, whether there's five people in the audience or 500, treat the show the same. Sing your heart out and and give it your best performance. That's a very good point. You you never know who's going to be in there. You never know who's going to be in the audience and who they might know that might be able to give your career a boost. Exactly. When did you start singing? Were you running around the house at uh, the age of two and three, uh, belting out songs at the top of your lungs? That's what I'm told. I'm told that pretty much as early as I could talk, I was singing. Um, that, you know, I loved singing along with Disney movies. Cinderella was an early favorite, I'm told. Uh, but yeah, I remember singing as as long as I have memories. I, I remember singing. When did you realize you wanted to do this as a profession? I mean, when you were growing up and you're running around the house singing Disney songs and and uh, you know, maybe performing for uh, uh, for your your parents and grandparents and, and uncles. There's that point, or was there a point in your life when you said, "Yeah, this is what I want to do." This is was there something that sparked that? I would say that if I was being very very truthful. I've always known that I wanted to be a performer as a career, that I wanted to play music and sing music as, as a career. I think I've always kind of known that, but in terms of a moment that created a spark, um, I decided to go to a performing arts high school. 
Um, there's, there's only one in Mississauga and I, you know, I got up the courage to, to audition for it when I was 13 and uh, my parents were really skeptical about it, but, you know, looking back now, they're really glad that I went there. Um, but I actually, and I've never told this story before, but I was too scared to audition for music because it felt like there was just too much at stake. I, felt that I didn't have enough training at the time and they wanted people that were more trained. I didn't actually start taking vocal lessons till the summer before grade 12. So I had been taking some piano and guitar lessons leading up to that. Um, but I was too scared that I'd be rejected from the music program. So I actually auditioned for drama and I got in. I'm, I'm very dramatic and I bring that to my shows and my performances. Um, and through my time at my performing arts high school, I ended up, you know, doing a lot of singing and joining choirs. And, uh, and I started gigging when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. I played at a coffee shop in Etobicoke, and I would play there on Friday nights. And I think it was through that experience that I realized, okay, this is this is what I want to do. When I was there performing publicly, and I was I was making, a, you know, a little bit of money doing it, which was really nice, I would get my little envelope with a $50 bill at the end of the night, um, which at the time, I mean, as a high school student, I get to show up and play three hours of music and walk away with 50 bucks. That's incredible. Um, you know, it definitely beats working for minimum wage, you know, at a, at a restaurant or wherever, because it was something I really enjoyed. So I think it was that experience that really solidified it for me that, yeah, okay, this is something I can see myself doing, you know, for life. Well, I think we should give a shout out to that performing arts school, which is Cawther Park, I believe is the one. That yes, yes, it is. Yeah. And uh, it is a, an amazing uh, school in the city of Mississauga. Many, many people have come out of there and made music and drama their profession. How was the support from your family when you were making these decisions? Did Did mom and dad say, Kat, how about if you think about being an accountant or a lawyer or, or a, <laughs> an engineer of some sort, uh, or did they always believe that you were going to be a professional musician? Well, I think that ultimately my parents have supported my goals, but they have certainly been skeptical. Um, they've had their moments of sort of saying, okay, you know, maybe you can just do music for fun. Maybe it can just be a hobby and you can do something else. And and I have had times where I've, I've, you know, gone through different ways of, of making money that weren't music, but I always end up back here. I always end up back with music because this is, this is truly what the heart wants what it wants, as they say. Right. So, you know, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm in my mid thirties now and I I've been doing this for, I don't know, maybe close to 20 years, I guess. And, um, and I, I have tried, I've tried other ways of, of, you know, sustaining myself and I always end up back here. So yes, to answer your question, my parents have been supportive, but they've certainly had their moments of skepticism and they've, you know, they, they thought about different alternative ways that perhaps I could, uh, take my career. Um, but ultimately they, they are very supportive and, and they always have been. Well, let's get into one of the songs that, uh, that you wrote. The song was released in 2020 and has a, I call it a very smooth, silky feel that makes you want to curl up in front of a fireplace and just be. So let's take a listen to singer songwriter, Kat Bernardi and let's get cozy. It's been a long year My bones are aching And I need you here Oh yeah, we work so hard We work night and day So cuddle up beside me It's a holiday Let's get cozy Let's get cozy Let's get cozy beneath the tree. Let's get cozy, nice and toasty. Let's get cozy, it's Christmas time. The fire is blazing and the sky. Let's get back on track 
was Let's Get Cozy by Cat Bernardi. Cat, what's the inspiration behind that song? I listened to the lyrics. I think of it being uh, released in 2020. So it's during COVID. Uh, what's going on in your mind when you're writing that song? Well, during COVID, which I think a lot of us maybe can relate to this idea, I really for the first time in a long time, I slowed down and I really realized what was important to me. It was about being close to loved ones. It was about having peace in my home. And that's sort of what I wanted to put forward with this, with this song, just like, like who cares about all the crazy things that happen during the holiday season? Who cares about the busy malls? Who cares about all these things? fancy things that we force ourselves to do. What's it really all about? It's about being with our loved ones. It's about being cozy. It's about, you know, loving our space and our home that we're in and filling it with love. So at the time, I remember uh, I was, you know, I actually, I was living in a different home. I, I was in a little, my little condo that I had at the time. And um, I remember sort of standing in my kitchen and, and my, my husband was on his way over to see me. Um, we weren't married yet, actually. We're married now. But at the time, we were, we were still dating. And he was on his way over to see me. And I, I guess I was excited to see him. And, um, and, and the inspiration just sort of came to me. I was standing in my kitchen and I started singing, Oh, babe, it's been a long day. And it just sort of came out. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I rushed over to my piano, which was just on the other side of the wall. And I sat down and I, I wrote the whole song in like under 30 minutes. And then when my husband came over, we we co-produced the song together and and sort of arranged it together. So he, we sort of looked at the piece together and he he's a an amazing pianist, so he played it out for me in a way that uh that was sort of more what I was looking for than how I was playing it. And I got to sing it through and he played it and I was like, "Yes, this is it." Cuz I had been working on a few songs for this EP because I I got this uh matchmaker micro grant from the Mississauga Arts Council and I was like okay now I I really gotta I gotta buckle down because I think I found out in November early November that I had gotten the grant and I wanted to release the project in December for you know the holiday season of course so um so yeah we got we got to work and uh and that's how the song came to be when you have two professional musicians in the same household is there a competition like, are you on the p? Are you on the keyboard, you know, hammering something out, and then uh, you know, hubby comes along and says, oh, "Cat, move over. This is the way." 
This is the way Jenny played. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say like with us, um, there's no competition. I think part of it is that we both specialize in different instruments. Um, and we both sort of have our own thing going on artistically, even though we do collaborate a lot, but we both have our own independent projects as well. Um, but no, I think genuinely, we just both support what one another does. Um, and, you know, I'm not, my main instrument is not the keyboard. So I can accompany myself. Um, and I can compose using the keyboard, but I don't call myself a pianist, right? Um, and I think my husband would say the same thing about himself as a vocalist. He does sometimes dabble in background vocals, um, but he's not a singer, you know? Um, he's a wonderful, wonderful pianist. Um, and, uh, you know, so we both have our specialties and we both bring that to the table and, and collaborate, you know, using our strengths. But no, I wouldn't say there's any kind of competition there. What's coming up for Cat Bernardi in the future? You've got some gigs coming up. You've got some new music coming out. What's happening? Yes, I am super excited about uh, my new single being released. It's called I Love You for Sentimental Reasons. Um, it's an arrangement that my husband and I worked on. Thomas Francis is his name. Uh, we wrote this uh, this arrangement and we recorded it together. And it's going to be perf uh, it's going to be released on February fourteenth. Hooray! Just in time for Valentine's Day. Um, and then I also have another project that I'm working on. It's it's another new single that'll be released in June. And I just received a uh, Mississauga Arts Council Matchmaker Micro Grant to support the music video and single for that. But I will tell a little bit more about that in the future. If people want to know more about your music, where can they go? They can visit me at Cat Bernardi Music. That's cat with a C, Bernardi with an I, music.com. That's my website. Um, I'm on Instagram and YouTube with the hand and Facebook with the handle at Cat Bernardi Music. And please do check out my brand new single, Mona Lisa, which was released in June 2023. I've got a killer music video that I put out with videographer Eric Chan from Limit One Productions. It's on YouTube um, and it's available to stream on all digital streaming platforms. Excellent. Well, it sounds like you've got a, a lot of things that are coming up, so we're so happy for you. We've been in conversation with Kat Bernardi. Kat, thanks for being with us. Thank you so much, David, for having me.